Namaste, friends. I'm Heather Wiest with Love, Serve, Inspire. And today I'll be guiding you through a release the stress, all levels stretch and restore. For today's practice, you'll just need a comfortable place to lie down. I'm here to guide you, but you are always your best teacher. So please make sure you listen to your body, you stay safe and to have fun. We're gonna begin standing today. So just finding a nice, comfortable standing position. I just want you to brush off your day. Just go ahead and take your hands, just brush off your day, you can brush off your limbs. Sometimes some people like to shake it out. Just a great physical way to release emotional and energetic um, energy. So feel free to just do that for a moment, just letting go of any stresses, any cares, any worries. Good job. We're gonna take a nice, really grounding breath technique now. So we're gonna inhale the arms up and overhead. And as you exhale, the palms are going to face down towards the earth. And you're just going to ground everything down. It feels really good and meditative. So we're just going to continue that. We're going to inhale up. Exhale. Just bring it on down. If it feels good now, close your eyes as we continue to move with our breath. Inhaling up. Exhale. Ground it down with the hands. Inhale the best. Exhale the stress. Inhaling, taking in what you need today. Exhale, letting go of any stress, cares, or worries. Continuing a few more rounds on your own with your breath. After your next exhale, just releasing the technique, keeping the eyes closed, just bringing the arms comfortably by the sides. Just noticing how that felt, how grounding that breath technique is. What is the stress or worry you can let go of today? What is a stress or worry you can let go of today? Through observation and awareness, we can be more calmly responsive and less emotionally reactive. Let me repeat that. Through observation and awareness, we can become more calmly responsive and less emotionally reactive. Drawing the hands at heart center and Anjali Mudra, just sealing a personal intention for your practice. It could be a positive affirmation. It could be a prayer to be a deep heart longing, inviting that in now. And then we'll softly open the eyes, release the palms. We're going to begin in a rag doll forward fold. If your lower back is sensitive and this is too much of a forward fold for you today, then feel free to take puppy dog at the wall. You would take your hands at a nearby wall and make your body into an L shape. 
a bend into the knees and just release through the lower back and through the spine. The low back is healthy today. We're gonna to come into a ragdoll forward fold. You're gonna place a generous bend into the knees. We're gonna go ahead and clasp opposite elbows and release all the way down. So again, start with those generous bend into the knees. Feel free to straighten as you feel comfortable. You can sway a little side to side or stay steady. You can even do a little gentle rock or bounce, letting the head and neck go, releasing tension in the jaw and the face. You're welcome to stay right here. I'm gonna go ahead and interlace my hands behind the back, just to get a little more opening. You can rest the palms of the sacrum or you can lift them away from the spine and then draw the shoulders away from the ears, creating more space into the sides of the neck. Full, deep, complete inhalations and exhalations. And then lastly, we're gonna interlace the hands behind the neck gently. Let the elbows drape down towards the mat and just let there be a nice gentle release to your cervical spine in the neck. Maybe you feel your warm hands against the cool neck, or it could be the opposite, cool hands to the warm neck. Releasing the jaw here a little bit more. Wherever you're at, whether it be puppy dog at the wall or in your rag doll forward fold, we're gently going to make our way into a comfortable seat. So I'm just gonna bend into my knees and come on down into a squat and come into my seat, but feel free to transition however is best for you. We're gonna be making our way onto our back, coming into constructive rest pose. So I'm gonna go ahead and gently roll on down. For constructive rest, I'm gonna go ahead and take my feet as wide as the mat or maybe a little bit wider than hip width distance. And then I'm gonna knock my knees in. There we go. And the arms can be wherever it's comfortable for you. They can be at the sides. You can bring your hands to the belly, one hand to the heart, one hand to the chest. You can take a soft diamond shape with the arms above the head. Whatever feels good for you, just settling in here and then closing the eyes. Relaxing from head to toe, letting go of tension in the head the cheekbones, the face and jaw, releasing the neck, shoulders, torso, thighs, knees, feet. And inviting in the acronym BRINK, B-R-N-C. When you feel like you might be on the brink, just on that edge, it's a great one to come to. It stands for breathe, relax, notice, and choose. Tuning into our breath here. Relaxing the body. Noticing what's going on, body, mind, and spirit. And then choosing how you want to move forward. It could be setting that intention. It could just be reflecting on how you want to proceed. About one more minute here in constructive rest pose. Feel free to adjust the arms at any time if you want a different variation. Noticing three more deep full breaths. And then 
very gently. We're going to release constructive rest pose. So drawing the feet where they're underneath the hips now, the knees are releasing. Maybe you take a full body stretch here from head to toe, let it feel really good. You can point and flex through the feet, even in the wrist. You can take some circular movements here in the joints, just releasing tension. We're gonna be transitioning into Ekapada Apanasana, a nice um, stretch for our legs here and our hips. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring the right knee into the chest. I'm gonna go ahead and just hug it into comfort. A little bit different variation here. I'm gonna take the left arm underneath that right hamstring. So you have that there just kind of holding you. And then the right arm's gonna come overhead behind you. So again, you're getting a little more of a stretch here from right fingertips to left toes, and then feel free to adjust that right leg, either more outside of the midline or towards midline. Again, working with your hip joint on that right side, you can take a little bit of movement, you can hold static, and then once you find a nice spot, just really let yourself go here. No holding in the feet, just let everything relax and open up as you breathe. Few more breaths on this side. to transition slowly here. So I'm going to go ahead, bring my right arm down. I'm going to hug both knees into the chest, releasing that left hand. Maybe you rock a little onto the lower back, massaging the spine here. And then we're going to switch sides. So I'm going to keep the left knee into the chest. That right leg is going to come out long, or you can always keep a bend into the knee if it's too much for the lower back. This time I'm going to take the right arm underneath the left hamstring. Left arm will come behind. And again, making those little adjustments in that left leg and hip to make it feel good for you. And then just holding here. And just noticing the natural flow of your breath in and out through the nose. Beginning to lengthen the exhalation. Maybe you notice what your natural inhale count is and then naturally doubling out the exhale just to really relax and calm the body, the mind, and the nervous system. Notice if any Noticing if you're gripping anywhere, just releasing toes and face. As we work on releasing tension in our body and muscles, we really can reduce stress. When you find yourself in a stressed state, consciously relaxing the body will help. A few more breaths on this side. And then 
we'll transition slowly by taking that left arm back down. We'll bring that right knee into the chest, releasing that uh, right hand. And we're gonna take a variation of child's pose on the back. It's a great variation for anyone that has any knee issues and is not able to do Balasana or child's pose um, on their knees. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna separate my knees out, keeping the feet relatively close together for now. I'm gonna cross my arms in front of me like an X. And then I'm gonna reach behind for my hamstrings. And then I'll release the feet and I'll let the knees come out to comfort to the sides. Now you have to be mindful of your chest here, just making it work for you with that cross in front. And we'll switch halfway through. So again, a little bit of release here through the hips, the inner thighs, and the lower back. Child's pose on the back. I'm just thinking about how you normally handle stress. Like what are your go-to responses? I'm just reflecting upon that. And there are three general ways of dealing with stress. There's numbing, there's lashing out, and lashing in. So with numbing, you could use any substance, whether that be food, alcohol, drugs. Numbing could also be represented in addictions of any kind, gambling, sex, technology, anything excessive. Lashing out, a little bit more aggression or anger, taking out on others, blaming, and lashing in, kind of drawing in to that negativity or self-pity, also anxiety, depression, self-harming. Maybe noticing here what your natural go-to would be without observation and awareness. And we're going to go ahead and switch the cross of the arms here. So I'm going to keep my legs the same. I'm just going to switch my cross and then come into the next side here. So as we begin to observe ourselves, maybe handling stress in those ways that are not so healthy, we can notice and make some changes. So it's a huge practice just to really authentically observe and be aware of our actions, our mindset. So reflecting on some healthy ways that you do deal with stress or would like to deal with stress. This is one of them, practicing yoga, connecting with our breath and our movement of the body, releasing tension. But some of those other ones that you like to incorporate or would like to incorporate. Through observation and awareness, we learn to become more calmly responsive and less emotionally reactive. A few more breaths here. And 
And then we're gently going to release the cross of the arms. We're gonna hug the knees into the chest again. You can rock a little side to side or back and forth if you'd like. We're either gonna transition onto the side or rock up to seated. From here, we're gonna come on to hands and knees for a cat and cow tabletop position here to begin. So finding your tabletop, the feet are relaxed behind you. And we're gonna inhale, bringing the head and the heart forward. And then exhale, rounding to the upper back and drawing the navel towards the spine. Continuing with your breath here, bringing length and space into the spine and linking our breath with some movement. Feel free to add any additional movement here. You can wag the hips side to side. You can take some big hip circles, a few more rounds here. And finding our neutral tabletop. We're going to take melting heart here, just a really nice posture to open up through the upper back and release stress. So we're going to go ahead and keep the hips over the knees. You're going to reach your hands forward and then ideally the forehead comes down towards the ground. If that doesn't happen, that's okay. Just keep your hands rooted and keep the head where it's comfortable. We'll just be here for a good minute. So gently drawing the navel to spine will protect your low back, but feel that nice stretch all along into the lats and the side of the back and into the thoracic spine in the upper back. Two more full breaths. We're going to go ahead and inhale on up a little bit. We're going to take shoulder the needle. So feel free to take this with the hips high, like we did in um, Melting Heart, or feel free to take it in Child's Pose with the knees slightly apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate um, the one in uh, tabletop position. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the left arm out to the side. We're gonna thread it through the right, and then that left cheek, ear, or temple come down towards the mat. That right arm can stay underneath the shoulder or it can come more forward or it can wrap behind the back. Whatever feels good for your body today. And just softening in, especially feeling the stretch in the outer left arm and into that right shoulder. Three more deep full breaths. If you have that wrap, you're going to unwind. We're going to begin to take the right hand underneath the right shoulder. As you inhale, you're going to arrive and come back to your neutral positioning. And then we'll take that on the other side. So the right arm will come out to the side. We'll thread it through the left. Right ear, temple, cheek, make it down to the mat. Left hand can stay where it's at, or you can walk it forward or wrap it behind the back, whatever feels best, again, for your body today. Hmm. Feeling that nice stretch into the right outer arm and left shoulder. Allowing yourself to soften a little bit more.
Inhale the best. Exhale the stress. Three more full breaths here. If you have that left hand behind the back or forward, you're gonna draw it back underneath the shoulder. We're gonna press into that hand and inhale all the way up. And just notice in your tabletop. Notice the effects of shoulder thread the needle. Maybe you let your head go here. Nod the head yes and no. And we're going to make our way onto our seat. We're going to be taking Baddha Kanasana or Bound Angle Pose. Butterfly shape with the legs. You really want to sit up onto the sit bones here. There are a lot of options here in regards to the feet. You can take them really close to the inner thighs, or you can take it out a little bit farther into a diamond shape. So your choice here, whatever feels best. We're gonna take a nice deep inhale. Maybe you hold on to the ankles or the feet. Really extend through the spine, just leaning forward. Another deep inhale as you really bring that heart forward, shoulder blades draw through the chest, soften through the shoulders. And then once you find a comfortable spot, just letting yourself round in. You feel this in different areas depending on what your body needs. A lot of people feel this in the inner thighs, the outer hips, but also that lower back into the spine. So adjusting at any time as you need to, to feel comfortable. And releasing the jaw, the cheekbones, the neck. About three more full rounds of breath. After your next exhale, you're going to go ahead and arise by, back up. Next, we're going to take Upta Vishta Konasana. It's a wide-legged forward fold. So again, kind of a challenging posture um, for most of us. So we're going to go ahead and widen through the legs and feel, I'll, yeah, I'll just take it this way. And again, you don't have to go super wide here. You can just open up a little bit or a lot, depending on your range of motion. And then we're going to take a nice deep inhale in. You can have the feet flexed and really engaged or not at all. It's up to you in this practice. And we're going to go ahead and just walk forward. So just making sure you're really up onto those sit bones. So again, it might be just here today and that's okay. We really want to make sure there's not a lot of sensation or sharp pain around the knees. So if you feel anything around the knees, feel free to take a gentle bend into the knees and just take your legs a little bit uh, less wide. And if you have the range of motion to be able to come on down, feel free to do that. And softening into the pose. So in this one, we mainly feel that stretch in the inner thighs. You're gonna feel it in the hips as well and in the spine. Softening with each breath. Three more deep full breaths.
As you're ready, you're gently going to walk the hands back to where you're most upright. And we're gonna take a side stretch in this variation here. So we're gonna go ahead and take that right arm onto the inside of the right leg. And then you can take that left hand behind the head, and this might be enough for you today. So just opening up through that torso towards the left or towards the sky. And if you have the range of motion, you wanna take it deeper. You wanna keep that left hip grounded down as best you can. And then you can reach your left arm more towards that right foot. So getting a big, big, big opening into that left side body. So honoring your body here, holding five more deep full breaths, softening especially through that right shoulder. Twisting a little bit more if you have that in your practice. As you're ready, we're going to inhale back up and just pause. Allow the eyes to close, just noticing that big opening into that left side body. And then we'll take that to the left. Left arm will come on the inside of that left leg. Right arm will start behind the head. Noticing how this side's showing up, it's already a big opening here. So feel free to stay here for those five full breaths. If you'd like to extend the right arm more towards those left toes, maybe you reach for them, find a nice twist as you gaze up through that right armpit to the ceiling. Trying to keep that right sit bone planted, really feeling that deep, deep stretch. Softening through the jaw and that left shoulder. Two more deep full breaths. One more breath. And we're going to go ahead and inhale all the way back up. And again, pause. Close the eyes. Relax the feet and pause. And we'll softly open the eyes. I'm going to give you a couple of options for our next pose. And we're going to come into a 90-90 stretch or a Z-sit or single pigeon, if that is in your practice. And we'll be transitioning into Janusirsasana after each side. So we're going to start with the right leg forward. So I'm going to demonstrate uh, both options here. So we're gonna have that right leg forward, the shin pretty much parallel to the mat. Again, that might adjust or change. And then you're gonna bend into the left knee and you're resting on that right hip. So a 90-90 stretch or a Z-sit often called. And so you can forward fold in this a little bit. Some people like to forward fold straight on over the shin. Others like to take it more at an angle and fold over the knee. Others like to fold over the foot. So again, finding what works for your body. So you can come on down, you can see what works well. We will be feeling the stretch into the right outer hip mainly. So you can try different variations to see where you feel the best stretch for your body. So that is option one. If you have a single pigeon in your practice and the knee is healthy in the front, I would encourage you to take that variation. I will take that as well. So my leg doesn't stay perpendicular to the mat and that's okay because that works with my body the way my knee and my hip line up together so I'm going to stay with that I'm going to extend my left leg back I'm going to start upright and notice how my body is feeling and I'm going to lead with my heart as I come on down so a beautiful beautiful outer hip stretch no matter if you're taking the 90-90 sit um, z sit or the single pigeon so softening in here. Mm -hmm. 
If you would like a deeper variation of single pigeon, you can take a little twist here. So we have that right leg forward, right knee forward. If you have that, you're gonna take the left arm towards the right side. You can bring your cheek down to the mat, and then you could take that right hand behind the back for a twist. So again, just a deeper variation, and you can even reach for the big toe of that right foot. A deeper variation of a twist in your single pigeon. Holding for about another minute here. A lot of sensation in the body as we open up through the hip. Notice if you can really relax the jaw. Such a correlation of being able to relax the jaw and the other hip. Release your gripping, let everything go. Wherever you're at, three more deep full breaths. If you have that twist going in single pigeon, we're gently going to release the right hand back down. We're going to press into that right hand and we'll unthread that left arm. Ah, everybody's going to arise from where they're at. You're gonna go ahead and release onto the right hip. And we're gonna bring the left leg forward for Janu Shirsasana. So that right, or excuse me, left leg is forward. The right leg is into the inner thigh. Again, adjust if you need to for your body. A bend into that left knee is encouraged if you need that. We're gonna inhale the arms up. We're gonna angle the arms over that left leg and we're gonna reach forward. You can grab onto anything that you get. Take a nice deep inhale as you lengthen through the spine, leading with the heart, and then go ahead and melt on down to where it's comfortable for you. So much going on in this posture opening up a lot through the QL muscles into the back, the lower back. You may feel it in the right hip. You may feel it in the left hamstring. You may feel it in the inner thighs. Wherever you feel it is where you need it and just soften into it. Let the neck muscles go here. Let the facial muscles go. I like having a flex in that left foot, but it's always optional. You can always point if you'd like. Three more deep full breaths. After your next exhale, you're going to go ahead and arise, just pausing at the top, just noticing how the body feels. So we're going to switch sides with that little sequence. So we're going to be taking the left leg forward. So again, you can start with that 90-90 sit or a Z sit. 
you can fold forward. So you're kind of sitting on that left hip. You can fold forward or more over the diagonal or more a diagonal over the foot. So notice what feels good for you. If you're transitioning into single pigeon, you'll begin to do so by lifting up the body, taking that left leg back a little bit more. Noticing how the body's showing up on this side. It's always different side to side. So honor your body. You're gonna take that nice deep inhale. If things are going well, you can come on down a little bit deeper. If you'd like to take that uh, twisted variation of single pigeon on this side, we're going to be taking the right arm and thread it underneath the left arm. You're going to go ahead and draw that right cheek towards the mat, and then the left arm will come behind the back, ideally reaching for the big toe of that left foot. And then soften in a little bit more. Let the gripping go. Consciously relaxing our muscles. One of the great things we can do for stress management is really learning to relax our muscle body. Take your breath to any tightness or tension. About three more deep, full breaths. If you have that wrap in the single pigeon, the twist, you're gonna go ahead and release that left hand back down. You'll push into that hand. You'll come on up, bring that right arm back through. Everybody's gonna slowly arise. You're gonna ground through the left hip and you're gonna bring in that right leg forward for John Yusur Sasana. Right leg will come straight. That left foot will come onto the inner thigh. Again, honor your body. You can always bend into that right knee as much as you need. You can have a flexor point in the foot, whatever feels best for you. We're gonna take a nice deep inhale in. We're gonna angle over that right leg and come on down. Another deep inhale as you lengthen and extend the spine, leading with that heart, coming on down to comfort. Again, bending that right knee as much as you need or like. Feeling the beautiful stretch in many places of the body. Where can you soften a little bit more? As we relax the body and our nervous system transitions from the sympathetic to the parasympathetic nervous system, 
The relaxed nervous system is called rest and digest. <laughs> so oftentimes you will hear your tummy grumble, little sounds, totally normal. And it's a great sign that you are relaxing. Two more deep breaths. As you're ready, we'll go ahead and come on up all the way, just pausing. Maybe you close your eyes, just noticing how the body feels. And opening the eyes if you have them closed. We're gonna extend the left leg to meet the right. So we're going to be taking a forward fold. So you really want to be up on the sit bones. I'm going to give you two options. Classic Paschimottanasana in a shoulder releasing yin style Paschimottanasana. Or like a caterpillar pose as they call it in yin. So if you're taking the classic pose, again, you can start out with bent knees as bent as you need them. We're going to inhale the arms up. You're going to extend with that spine. Reach for whatever you can and then work towards straightening through the legs and finding a nice fold for you. I'm gonna practice the yin style variation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my arms underneath my thighs and you can maybe clasp opposite leg here, elbows, and then I'm just gonna round in. So I'm gonna have those knees bent. I am going to have them supported. My feet are just gonna relax and I'm gonna have a rounded spine. It's not extended, I can really stretch through each muscle in my back, through the shoulders and my neck. So I really enjoy this variation, but feel free to take the classic Paschimottanasana. Full deep breaths, lengthening the exhalation. Forward folds are very calming for our nervous system. They help compress the vagus nerve that we have in our torso. Very, very calming again. So when you are super stressed, just a great posture to come into. Noticing here if you're gripping anywhere, letting it go, observing and just being aware of what we naturally want to do, just making those conscious changes and choices. Three more deep full breaths. Very gently, we're going to begin to unwind and come back up. And just pausing again. We're going to be transitioning onto our backs for a supine twist, a spinal twist. I'm going to offer a pinwheel variation and classic easy twist. And then from there, we'll be sliding into Shavasana, our final resting pose. So placing a bend into the knees, we're gonna go ahead and come on down onto our backs. So for a pinwheel twist, you would take the feet about as wide as the mat, arms come out into a T, and you would take over to the right. So again, you got to notice how that left knee is feeling. You want it to feel supported and not just um, 
hanging in space uncomfortably. So notice how that feels for your body. So if you're taking pinwheel twist, you would do this and then you would come back to center and take the left side when I cue you to do so. Um, a deeper variation of pinwheel twist would be taking that right foot on top of the left thigh and allowing it to come down. For my body, that doesn't work very well. It doesn't feel good in my left knee, but this may work for your body. So a deeper variation of pinwheel twist. I'm gonna be taking classic easy twist, supine twist. So I'm gonna have my arms out into a T. I'm gonna be twisting to the right to begin, but I do like to shift my hips a little to the left hug my knees in, and then come on down to the right. There are other variations of supine twists that are deeper. You can cross at the legs for a deeper twisted roots or eagle legs with your twist. You can take cat's tail, uh, another deeper variation. I'm gonna stick with this one today. So again, adjust for your practice. You can take the right hand if you're in the easy twist to the outside of that left leg, giving yourself a little bit of adjustment. And then soften whatever variation you've chosen. Soften everything. The supine twists are so healthy for our spine, for everything, the organs of the belly. Very relaxing. Let the face be soft. If you feel any tingling or numbing in the arms, just go ahead and draw the arms closer to the body. About one more minute on this side. As you're ready, we're gently going to return to center. Maybe it feels good here for you to take a full body stretch or hug the knees into the chest. You can rock a little onto the lower back. So whether you took the pinwheel or easy twist, we're gonna be taking that variation to the left. So beginning to ground the right feet back, or the feet back down into the mat and the arms out to the side in a T. And then feel free to take that pinwheel twist. I'm gonna shift my hips a little to the right, hug my knees in and take easy twist on my left side. Maybe you take that of the left or the right leg Opening up a little more.
observation and awareness are the first steps One more minute on this side. I'm going to release back to center. Maybe a full body stretch feels good here. Or you hug the knees in. For our last posture before Shavasana, we're going to be taking happy baby. So bending into the knees, we're going to go ahead and lift the feet off the mat towards the ceiling or sky. And then you're going to reach for the outside edges of the feet. If you can't get that, you'll just grab the outsides of the ankles or shins. And you're just going to draw the knees down towards the armpits or the side ribs. Feel free to stay here. You can rock side to side. Happy baby. A great release for the low back. Ananda Bala. And let it feel good. A few more breaths here. If there's anything else you would like to do before Shavasana, feel free to take that here. And we're slowly going to transition into Shavasana. Feel free to take Shavasana on the back, on your side, or even on the stomach. It's always a nice variation. Finding just a comfortable place to lie. Making those final adjustments as shoulder blades draw through the chest, opening up through the heart space. Shoulders soften away from the ears. And then moving the mouth around. Taking a yawn or a swallow really releases the jaw. Release the stress. Inhale the best. Exhale the stress. Recalling your intention your positive affirmation, your prayer, or your deep heart longing. Honoring that once again. And starting at the head, I want you to consciously relax all muscles. Maybe it takes a count of 10 to reach to the bottom of the feet. Mentally scanning your body. Notice where you're gripping and then let it go.
Shavasana. welcome to stay here as long as you'd like. If you're ready to transition, just noticing the breath, your breath of life flowing freely, each breath a purpose. Bringing some gentle movement to fingers and toes. Maybe rock the head gently side to side. Might feel good to take a full body stretch, fingers to toes. We're going to place a bend into the knees and transition into a fetal position on either side. You can use your arm as a pillow. And just noticing here the effects of the practice. The body relaxed, the mind calm, and the spirit at peace. And just knowing you can come here at any time just by connecting with the breath and especially lengthening out the exhale. And just taking a moment to notice what do you need right now? What do you need right now? Notice what arises and just honoring that sometime in the rest of this day. As you're ready, we're going to use the strength of the arms to make our way into a comfortable seat. 
keeping the eyes soft and closed. Palms face up on the thighs in a receiving gesture. Picking one minute of quiet reflection and meditation, fully integrating our practice. Allow yourself to listen and receive. Take two collective breaths together. Nice deep inhale in. Let it go through the mouth. Another deep inhale. Longest exhale yet. Drawing the hands into heart centered Anjali Mudra. It's been a true honor and a pleasure to guide you through this practice. Thank you for sharing your beautiful presence with me. From the light within me, I honor and respect the light within you. Walk in grace and peace and shine bright, my friend. Much love and namaste. Thank you everyone for joining me today. You can stay connected with me on my website, loveserveinspire.com. I also have a yoga nidra that goes very well with this practice, yoga nidra for releasing stress. So please enjoy on my website or YouTube. Have a great day, everyone.